Hello. Uh, in this video, we will be looking at uh, what is linguistics. I mean to give a introduction to linguistics in the coming one or two other videos. We will begin with the question, what is linguistics? Well, um, linguistics is the scientific study of language. Why, it is, why is it scientific? And linguistics is not very old. It is maybe 100 years, 150 years under that. Before that, it was called philology. And it was part of philosophy and things like that. And people were interested in language, particularly Latin and such languages, which are no longer used for actual speech. So the there was a very deep attempt at learning the language structures of Latin, uh, particularly in, in England. It was only in late 19th century and in the 20th century that a lot of attention came to be given to study living languages, for example, English or French, actual languages that are used by everyday people. Until then, the structures of Latin was imposed on English or French or whatever language uh, people in Europe were trying to study. But uh, by early 20th century, there was a focused attempts at studying a language, a living language. Latin is dead because nobody uses it for actual communication. English is living because it's used by thousands and thousands and thousands of people for actual use in everyday life. So, um, Linguistics evolved as a very important uh, science. Uh, it's, it's, it's a scientific study of language. We'll look at it in some detail. And, uh, well, to introduce, we can say that um, there are different aspects to linguistics. It looks at lang the different aspects of language, like sounds, for example, the sounds, because in speech, speech came first. In speech, we use the basic units called sounds. And different sounds come together and we have meaningful utterances. Letters, individual letters of the alphabet, we put them together and we, we form words. And the words are arranged in a particular order. Then it comes to have grammar. And then out of that, we evolve meanings. Words have individual meaning. And words, when we put them in order, into sentences, they have other meanings. And pronunciation is another important aspect. Well, I have mentioned sounds, letters, words, word order, grammar, pronunciation, meaning, etc. to make it simple for you. Now we will look at more technical terms for the same uh, ideas. So the first uh, aspect of linguistics is the study of phonetics. Phonetics is the study of sounds speech sounds. So, human beings are able to make an infinite number of sounds, particularly using the mouth and the speech organs which generally associate with speech, the air going up from the lungs and getting articulated in the, in the throat, in the mouth, in the nose, etc. We will look at it in great detail later in another video. But now let's know that phonetics is basically how sounds are produced and how sounds are picked up by the ears and then sent to the brain and how these sounds are understood or processed. Uh, well, that is basically what phonetics is about. So, understand phonetics as the study of speech sounds. The production of speech sounds is called auditory phonetics and the understanding is called acoustic phonetics. But in our range of study, we will not be looking at acoustic phonetics. We will be looking only at the auditory part, how sounds are produced. So, phonetics is the study of how sounds are made. It can be any language. It is just, the, just how speech sounds are produced is called phonetics. At the same time, phonology is a broader thing. It is the application part of phonetics. All the sounds that we learned that uh, all the sounds about which we have learned, how they are produced, etc. In phonology, we look at the how these sounds come together and form different meaningful units. 
for example, it will be the in, in phonetics, we will study the sounds like na and na, etc. But in phonology, we will look at the differences, the contrast. For example, in Malayalam, we have two letters for na and na. That there are two different sounds, they are two different letters. And in manam and manam, we use those two letters and those two different sounds. In English, on the other hand, there is na and na, but not exactly like in Malayalam, but na and na sounds are approximately there in English, but they are represented by one sound, which is na sound. And in pen, for example, we would say the na sound comes. In fun, the last sound would be something like na. So in English, you have only na to represent both these sounds. Well, these are kind of things we generally would associate in phonology. I am giving just a small example. There are all these kinds of things, how different sounds are put together and how they come to have different, uh, you know, meaningful sounds is dealt with in phonology. So phonology is the broader topic in which we apply phonetics. In um, another aspect, so we looked at phonetics, we looked at phonology, and now we look at morphology. So, as I said, we began speech first. People began to speak first and then they began to write it down. Maybe several thousand years after people learned to speak only, did they begin to write down. And morphology is related to the written form of the uh, language. So, the word morphos, you know, it, it, it means shape. So, the written shape, what you can actually see on a page once you have written. So, morphology looks at how words are formed from smaller units. This, these smaller units are called morphemes. Um, this also we will look at uh, phonetics, phonology, morphology, etc. We will look at greater detail in later videos. Here, I am just introducing them to you. So, um, for example, you have this word untied. Untied has three morphemes in it. One is un is a morpheme, tie is a morpheme, and de is another morpheme. And in morphology, we look at, we study how these morphemes come together and form words like untied. So that is an example for what morphology, what happens in morphology. So morphology is a study of how words are formed. Now we have looked at sounds, we have looked at words. And now we look at how the words are arranged in meaningful forms. So syntax is the order in which words are arranged in a sentence. It looks like, looks at the structure of the sentences so that the meaning is revealed. So in speech, we don't say single words. We put words in a particular order. And this word order is syntax. Syntax is what gives us the final product, which are sentences. Uh, both the spoken form and the written form. In uh, we can use uh, in other words, syntax looks at how morphemes are organized grammatically in a sentence. We know that morphemes are so words, and these words are meaningfully arranged in a sentence, and we study that, and that comes under the aspect called syntax. So, uh, the word syntax is often used instead of grammar, but it's not totally right. But grammar, much of grammar looks at the word order, how the words are arranged in different orders and make sense. We say that English has a very strict word order, while Malayalam doesn't have a very strict word order. Such things we will look at, look at later when we discuss grammar. Now, semantics. Uh, we talked about words. And semantics is a study of meaning, is the analysis of the meaning of words and how these words relate, relate uh, to one another. So, uh, a point here is that no words have any particular meaning associate with, associated with it. We give meaning to words. The word horse, for example, it doesn't mean an animal. It means an animal only to an English person. To another person, it may mean something else. So, the word, for example, kalam, a Hindi speaker, the word kalam means one. To a Malayalam speaker, it means something else. So, the meaning is something we give it. Meaning is related to the cultural background of the speaker. And this complex thing, the study of meaning and how the words come to have different metaphoric sense, etc., 
he studied in detail under semantics. We will look at semantics again later. And finally, we have what is called pragmatics, which is the actual use of language in, uh, in the society for communication. We have aspects like phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, etc. All these things are various components. They all come together and work together in actual communication. And that aspect is looked at um, by pragmatics. It's a branch of linguistics dealing with language in use and the context in which these linguistic items are used. So, um, to conclude that part, uh, linguistics were, was earlier called philology. In, until mid-19th century in, in Europe, it was called philology, study of uh, philos, logos is word and philos is love. And linguistics evolved in the 20th century as a scientific study of languages. Linguistics is not related to any particular language you should remember. It is any language can be studied using the tools of linguistics. And in linguistics, and earlier, until, as I said, mid-19th century, late 19th century, it was more of a historic study of dead languages like Latin. But from in the, in the present era, since 20, early 20th century, different other aspects are brought into linguistics, like the psychological mind, psychological aspect of language production, how we understand language, the cognitive part, uh, where the brain is involved and the sociological part where how language is produced and how it works within a society such very complex um, aspects of language are also studied under linguistics and we will conclude this video by looking at different um, types of linguistics there are so many specializations within linguistics we we'll look at a few of them here, major ones. Uh, one is sociolinguistics, which is the study of language and how language functions within a society. We know that within a society, um, according to the status, according to the trade some people do, according to the area in which people live, people have different kinds of language. People have different dialects, registers, etc. And these are all, these all these come under sociolinguistics. Psycholinguistics is a study of the mind and language, how a person's mind is in why psychological processes, the psychological processes behind understanding and producing language will be looked under psycholinguistics, a very major uh, branch of linguistics. Computational linguistics uh, is uh, um, something that evolved in the late 20th, 19th century. It, well, it became very, very uh, advanced in the late 19th century with the booming of computers. It is a simulation of language using computers. And then you have comparative linguistics in which different languages are and their linguistic systems are put together side by side and compared. We have historical linguistics, which is a study of how languages change over time. We have applied linguistics which is a very important part, which is about how all these theories actually are used, applied in actual speech. So the important uh, paper that many courses, uh, many programs now offer involved is this, this ELT or English language teaching. Applied linguistics is all about um, English of teaching languages. You know the processes uh, behind understanding a language, learning a language, and you use that in teaching the language as well. Applied linguistics is a very important field. And you have neurolinguistics, which studies the structures in the human brain that underlie grammar and communication. And you have a uh, more recent and emerging field called forensic linguistics, which, uh, you know, it's in, in forensic, in, in a legal uh, area where uh, a person, a, uh, the person who committed a crime is to be located, his language is analyzed and it uh, often leads to the uh, uh, conviction of the person or even the, uh, the apprehension of the person. That means a person, a person can be arrested using this information and he can also be properly punished using evidences brought forth by forensic linguists. So this is uh, by way of introducing linguistics to you. 
So linguistics has various aspects, phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, um, semantics, pragmatics, etc. Uh, there is linguistics has several branches, social linguistics, psycholinguistics, etc. So, and linguistics is the scientific study of languages. And in the next video, we will go to the next level and look at some of the key concepts in linguistics. Until then, 